the first thing is where to start because you don't know where to start with low capital. Well, this is a great question. A lot of people come to me and say, hey, Natasha, I want to get into property investment. I have no money. Let me tell you a great story of something that has just happened to me and I'm very excited about it. So uh, about 18 months ago, I put some of my money into a crowdfunding project in um, in Stourbridge, just outside Birmingham. It was on an 18% return and it was a pub to de to resi development and so they had put this project on a peer-to-peer -peer lending site called future bricks now i've spoken a lot about future bricks mainly because i get on with the owner of future bricks so well um our year is lovely this isn't a paid podcast i'm just telling you the story of of what happened so she said to me natasha you might want to invest in this project it's paying out at 18 percent per annum I was like, wow, okay. Do you know what? It's worth a punt. I'll put some money into this project. So I put just a little bit of money. It was about a thousand pounds into this project and um, thinking 18% is really, really risky, but why not give it a go? A thousand pounds, if I lose it, okay, I'd be able to make that back pretty easily. And I know for some people, a thousand pounds is a lot of money. Um, I'm just saying that my mindset is that I'd be able to get to make that back so it, I wouldn't lose sleep at night if that happened, right? So I've changed it from a scarcity mindset to a abundant mindset. Anyway, just this week, that a thousand pounds at 18% per year paid out. Very nice too. It's got me a beautiful new bathroom in one of my flats. It was a great investment and such a small amount to start with. But over the 18 months, that's made 18% in year one and then 9% in year two. Perfect. You wouldn't even normally get that on a regular property investment. So that was that's a good place to start if you have low capital and you don't have to invest for 18 months. There's projects that come out just for six months, or there's projects that come out for 12 months. So if you really are starting with super, 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 super low capital, I mean, 500 pounds, 1000 pounds, that is a really good place to start. Yes, it's risky. If the project doesn't go right, or it doesn't pay, it folds, then you, you lose your money. So always make sure that you are checking out what the project is. And if it's something you'd want to invest in, know the risks. But I put that I was investing in this 18% deal back when I first did and I got absolutely trolled on social media. You're stupid, don't invest in this. Well, sucks to be you guys if you don't want to do it because I just made money on it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where I would start if I had really low capital because the other thing is it gets you used to doing your due diligence on these, on these projects and there's so much information on the websites about what this site is going to do, what you should be doing with it, um, all of the deal analysis. So you can get used to going through that and get a feel for if it's the sort of deal you want to. So as you progress and you get more money, you then start thinking, well, I could go out and do this on my own. And you may even decide that you want to go back to that peer to peer lender where you have invested your money and say, hey, would you pack a, back a deal that I'm getting involved in? If you have maybe 20 to 30,000 pounds, then I would look at maybe more of a, a property purchase uh, in a, a cheaper area of the country. So with 20 to 30,000 pounds, you could buy anything between 60,000 pounds and 100,000 pounds and be looking at getting anywhere of a rental income between 450 to 600 pounds per calendar month. So if you've got that kind of money, then start looking in Sheffield, Liverpool, Manchester, Stoke. Manchester's a little bit more expensive now, but those would be places that you could start investing in. So if you really don't have that much money, you have say 500 to a couple of thousand pounds, have a look and see if peer-to-peer -peer lending is right for you. If you have 20 to 30,000 pounds, then you can start investing in properties. Try and invest in something that needs a little bit more modernization so that you can increase the value of that pretty quickly. 
I get it, those properties come on the market, they get snapped up. But we're in a market at the moment where property investors are trying to get rid of their rubbish stock because they're getting taxed highly on it. There's a lot more legislation. So if you're in it for a bit of a more meaty project, then that would be something that you could buy up and learn from it as you go. But always be prepared that if you are going to be buying a cheaper property because it needs work, you have to do the work. You do have to do the work to it. You cannot just let out rubbishy properties. Please don't let out rubbishy properties you have to be providing safe, comfortable accommodation. I will always shout that from the rooftops until I'm blue in the face. Never ever just decide it's okay to to rent out substandard accommodation. That's not cool, it's not okay, it's not ethical. It says something about you, don't do it. Just, Just know that if you're buying a property that needs modernization, you're gonna have to have a bit of money set aside to do the modernization. But with 20 to 30,000 pounds, you should have that. So I hope that answers your question. Next up, where, sh- where to start with deciding what strategy I should focus on? Good question. There are so many strategies out there. You must see Facebook ads about it. You must be in different property investment groups thinking, well, someone said to me rent to rent. Someone said to me lease options. Someone said to me HMO. Someone said to me serviced accommodation. On a members club live drop-in session that I hosted last night, we were talking about this and the members were actually advising each other that the way that they have focused and done incredibly well, We've I've got one investor there who's got 100 or so properties, another one with 10 properties, another one with the 20 property range. They have just focused on one strategy and the strategy that excites them, not the strategy that someone else has told you to do. A lot of people come to me about rent to rent. Again, I don't do rent to rent. The RICS do not do not see it as a strategy that I can look at. And quite frankly, I believe that if you are doing rent to rent, you should at least be accredited with the RICS or ARLA because you are essentially property managing a property and you need to do that well. It goes back to the other uh, comment that I made just a few minutes ago please don't be putting substandard accommodation on the market. It is unethical and you should be ashamed of yourself. That comes from me. (laughs) I'm not here to lecture anybody though, if you, you know, always do your best. So really you need to decide on a strategy that excites you. There would be absolutely no point in buying a property or going forward with spending money that you just do not care about. If you listened to last week's podcast episode where I was getting super excited that I just completed on a property, it's because I care so damn deeply about buying that property. It excites me. It's been on my goals board for years since about 2015. You know, so that is exciting for me because it forms part of my strategy and, you know, then I'm prepared to go for it. If you look at something, you're like, meh, I don't really care. HMOs seem like they're going to be a waste of my time residential buy to doesn't really make enough income well you're not going to focus on any strategy I would really sit back and look at my goals for me my next I'm moving now into commercial strategy I'm not going to be buying as many residential commercial is my jam I love it I get very excited by it because I like the strategy I like the lease advisory stuff I don't really have to be on the ground at all everything is to do with lease advisory Um, and the strategy around what lease terms I'm negotiating, that for me works phenomenally well. So that's where I'm moving towards. But for you, you might think, okay, well, I actually want to be a decent landlord. I like the idea of just one set of tenants in each property. I'm going to be quite hands-on, so I'll be managing it myself. And then you decide, okay, well, I want a two up, two down, bog standard property with parking and a garden and I want to let that out for £600 per calendar month. Fantastic. If that is something that really excites you and gets you going, great, go for it. That should be your strategy. And then you'd be looking at somewhere like Stoke or you'd be looking at somewhere like Liverpool to buy. But if you then say, no, I want to get far more hands-on. I want to 
provide beautiful accommodation for multiple tenants, then great, I would go for HMOs and I would go in there and decorate the HMOs and furnish it beautifully and use lots of great colors and be all overexcited about that. Or if you think, oh, I really love traveling. I like staying in new accommodation. I like the idea of Airbnb. I like providing quirky, unusual, great quality accommodation then make serviced accommodation part of your strategy. I can't give you a definite strategy. What I can do is tell you to think about what you enjoy and how much time you have. Because if you really are time constrained, you don't have evenings, you don't have weekends, you're not interested in going and viewing properties, well, you're gonna have to look at investing closer to home. And then you're going to have to look at what do you need to be getting income wise so that you can also afford to outsource the management to a property manager. Do you see there's so many different factors. So I want you to brainstorm it. The very first thing that you should do when you're deciding what strategy you should focus on, brainstorm, sit down, get your notebook out, get a blank piece of paper. um, And you know, I love a good sticky note. So I write things all over sticky notes. Doesn't have to be you if that's not what you like to do. But decide on what you enjoy. What about property investing do you think is the thing that excites you most? Yes, we all talk about money, but property investment is far more than money. There's a lot that has to go into it. So put the money aside, kind of lift it out of your head and park it. Then write down everything that you want to get out of being a property investor, what you enjoy doing, what you'd like to get stuck in on. And that's what would form part of your strategy.